4 classes in Terraria, 1 endgame armor set each, 1 final weapon each, and 1 celestial pillar for each. Anyone who's been in Terraria before knows how annoying it can be to kill the Moon Lord for the first time. After defeating the Lunatic Cultist, you have to defeat all 4 pillars and fight him, which takes quite a significant amount of time, even with endgame gear. If you lose to the Moon Lord, you have to start the whole process over again. Maybe if you're lucky, you'll have enough celestial fragments to make the celestial sigil and skip the pillar process, but that doesn't usually happen the first time around. So in today's video, I'll go over all four of the celestial pillars and everything you need to know about defeating them, including the safest and quickest strategies, the best equipment for every class and playstyle, tips and tricks, and even one cheese strat to defeat each pillar if you just want to get them over with without trying. So sit back, relax, and let's get into the video. First things first, you have to equip yourself with the right gear. Depending on your class, you should choose one of the four pre moon load armor sets beetle armor for melee, shroomite for ranger, spectre for mage, and spooky for summoner. For a full guide on how to get each one, check out one of these four videos on my channel, whichever one matches your class. Now for accessories, depending on which difficulty you're playing, you'll have 5, 6, or 7 slots. No matter which class you are, here are a few accessories that I recommend. Fishron Empress or Betsy Wings for flight, Master Ninja Gear for the dash and dodge chance, the Celestial Shell for its variety of bonuses to every stat, Lightning Boots for mobility, or the Terra Spark Boots, but they both have the same speed, so it doesn't really matter. The Sorg Insignia for infinite flight, Trauma Myths for increased health regen and decreased potion sickness duration, Frozen Shield for its damage reduction and multiplier buffs if you're playing with friends, and the Destroyer Emblem for damage and critical strike chance bonuses. A few class specific accessories to consider are the Fire Gauntlet, Recon Scope or Stalker's Quiver, Celestial Emblem, and Papyrus Scarab for each class's damage boost, Mana Cloak to always keep your mana up, Pygmy Necklace to increase your minions, the specific emblem from the Wall of Flesh for whichever class you're playing to again increase your damage, and either the Apprentice's Scarf, Squire's Shield, Huntress's Buckler, or Monk's Belt to increase summon damage. From this huge pool of accessories, choose the ones that you feel fit your playstyle. For example, you can pick more defensive accessories for a tank build, offensive accessories for a glass cannon build, or a mix of both for a hybrid build. No matter what, I heavily advise that you use the first four, since they can provide crucial abilities for any class. Lastly, let's do weapons. There's a variety for each class, I'll go with some of the best ones and you can choose your favorites. For melee, the Influx Waver and Terrorblade are the best swords available. The first one is harder to aim with but does more damage, while the second one is easier to aim with and is easier easily obtainable, but does less damage overall. The choice is yours. The Eye of Cthulhu yo-yo with the yo-yo bag is also a great option if you like yo-yos, and my favorite is the flare on because it does tons of damage and doesn't require aiming, although it can be a pain to get. For rangers, the chain gun with chlorified bullets, tsunami with holy arrows, or my favorite, the electric sphere launcher with rockets from the cyborg, all work. For mages, the razor blade typhoon, razor pine, blizzard staff, and laser machine gun are the best choices. Whichever one you want is perfect. And lastly, for summoners, I would choose a Xeno or Tempest staff with the Kaleidoscope, Morningstar, or Dark Harvest Whip. Obviously, if you've gotten the Terra Prisma, you should use that. Okay, now that you're all equipped up, let's get into fighting the pillars. Each pillar has a shield that's broken after defeating exactly a hundred of its enemies, and once the shield is done, you can attack the pillar and destroy it relatively quickly since it has very low health. The Stardust Pillar is arguably the easiest, so it should be targeted first. It will drop Stardust Fragments, and even if you're not a summoner, the Stardust Dragon Staff will be extremely effective against the remaining pillars. If you're having trouble with this pillar, you can cheese it by going into the pillar's zone, attracting a couple of star cells and leading them outside the zone. Then defeat the cells, let them multiply and regrow and defeat them again. Repeat this process until the shield is down. The cells are predictable and easy, this method might take a while but it makes defeating the pillar extremely easy. There's also no easy way to tell when the shield is down, so unless you want to count every enemy you kill until 100, just check the pillar shield periodically to see if it's down. Keep in mind that leaving the world will reset the pillar shield but dying will not. The second pillar to fight would be whichever one corresponds to your class because its pillar fragments can be used to craft better weapons for you. I usually play ranger and the vortex pillar is the next easiest one anyway so I'll move on to it next but if you choose another pillar skip ahead in this video for tips on that one. Anyways for the vortex pillar you want to prioritize killing the alien queens above all else because she inflicts an annoying ass debuff called distorted which makes you a super easy target by distorting gravity around you which only allows you to move right and left. The other enemies like the alien hornet and storm Daver are predictable and easy to dodge but if you're distorted they'll almost guaranteed hit you, so focus on the alien queens. If you're still having trouble, you can grab some wood and make a tiny house with a bed right outside the pillar zone, so that when you die, you can spawn and get right back to defeating it. A pylon network also works. Another thing you can do is also go into the zone for a few seconds, step out, and then kill the few enemies that spawn and come at you, and keep doing this until you kill a hundred and then defeat the pillar. This way you can break up the fight into small manageable pieces. The cheese tactic you can use for the vortex pillar is to make a specific box in the sky. First, Buy an ice 
shard from the wizard, then place an ice block above the pillar, then build three to the right, four blocks on either side like this, and then put one block like this and one platform like this at the top while hugging the right wall. The reason for this one platform is because if it was a block, a vortex portal would spawn inside the box and kill you. By putting a platform, the portal will spawn above the box, and enemies won't be able to fit inside the one block gap either. For the box, don't use ice rod blocks because they disappear in 15 seconds, just grab some regular mud or stone. This cheese strat is by far the easiest way to defeat the pillar since none of the projectiles from the vortex enemies can penetrate walls. Once you defeat the pillar, use the vortex fragments to craft the vortex beater or phantasm. I prefer the beater, but both are great weapons that will help you with the next pillars and moon lord. The next pillar I'm going to fight is the nebula pillar since it's second most powerful out of the four. This is where things get trickier because of these annoying floaty brain things. They're called nebula floaters and will teleport around to different parts of the screen when attacked and shoot high damage lasers. Be prepared to use your eye muscles because you'll have to track each one's teleport and be ready to change the direction of your attacks quickly. The other enemies are all easy and the majority of enemies you'll kill are brain sucklers. Once again if you're having trouble you can make a bed outside the zone or use the tactic of going in and out of the zone to break the fight into small manageable pieces. The cheese tactic for the nebula pillar is similar to the vortex pillar except even more specific. If you trap yourself inside a regular box then the nebula floaters will rush at you and try to kill you so that won't work and they can shoot through platforms so using them won't won't work either. The tactic that I'm about to show you comes from the legendary YouTuber Gun Gear. All credit to him. First, grab the ice rod, platforms, and blocks, and then fly high above the nebula pillar where no enemies will spawn yet and build a 5x5 box out of platforms. Place one block in the top middle, one on the right and left middle, and then build downwards at least 36 platforms, and then start expanding those platforms out a bit like this. The second you start expanding out, enemies will start spawning, so quickly run back up to the box, sit inside it, and place two blocks just like this. Break the platforms on the outside and now you'll be able to sit here without getting attacked and defeat all enemies on the outside. It is possible for the brain sucklers to rarely slip through the cracks so keep healing potions handy and be wary of what's happening. You can also equip a shiny stone to heal while you stand in the box. Once you defeat the pillar, you can use the fragments to make either the nebula arcanum or blaze. The arcanum has higher damage and is considered better by most people, but the blaze is my preference because of its more accurate homing, better single target attack, and cooler look. The most important feature obviously. Last up, I'm fighting the solar pillar, arguably the hardest pillar because of two main reasons. Coraltipedes and Selenians. Since the solar pillar reflects the melee class, its enemies are grounded and don't have much range. To keep the fight fair and the player grounded as well, the Coraltipede is a super high damage, high health, high speed enemy that will only attack you if you're in the sky. So first things first, get used to fighting without flying. Next up, Selenians are these cool ass solar ninja enemies that when they spin at you, they take no knockback and will reflect all projectiles similar to the bow mimics when they close. Watch out for this deadly attack. Most enemies also have super high knockback resistance which is terrible because they'll come flying at you and your only option is to dodge. Just like for the rest of the pillars, you can set your spawn in the bed right outside the pillar zone or go in and out of the zone to break up the fight into pieces. The cheese strap for this pillar is similar to the last two but slightly different and once again uses the ice rod. Coraltipedes only target players who are far away from any blocks. So run in, get close to the pillar and fly up above the pillar and spawn in ice block below you. Then build a bridge out of platforms in both directions. This way you can easily attack all the enemies below you and as long as you don't fly on the bridge the crawltipedes won't get you either. Don't extend the platforms off screen to the right or left too much because then enemies can spawn on top of the bridge. Keep it short and watch out for fireballs which you can destroy with your weapon and corites because they fly and move pretty quick although are predictable. Once you get the solar fragments the daybreak and solar eruption are both amazing choices. The first is better single target and the second is better multi-target. So if you're trying to beat the moon lord, the daybreak is slightly better. Now for a final recap of everything I mentioned in this video. 1. Equip yourself with one of the 4 pre-moon lord armors, the appropriate weapons, and appropriate accessories. 2. Defeat the stardust pillar first no matter what class you are so that you can craft the stardust dragon staff and make the rest of the pillars way easier. If you have the terror prisma, you can skip this step. 3. Your next pillar fight should be the pillar corresponding to the class that you're playing so that you can upgrade your weapons after defeating it. 4. Fight the remaining 2 pillars in whichever order you wish, following the tips, tricks, and strategies that I explained in this video. Here are a few extra points to keep in mind. The easiest to hardest pillar goes Stardust, Vortex, Nebula, then Solar. You can guess how low a shield is by its appearance. If it's almost faded out, then you're almost at 100 enemies. After defeating each pillar, there'll be a status message in the bottom left, and after the fourth one, the message will say impending doom approaches, meaning the Moon Lord will spawn at the player's location in about 60 seconds. Keep in mind that each pillar drops between 12 and 100 fragments depending on what mode you're playing.
saying, weapons require 18 fragments to make, and the celestial sigil to summon the moon requires 12 of each fragment. You can also make one fragment type by combining the other three fragment types. For example, you can make one nebula fragment by combining one solar, vortex, and stardust fragment. You'll also need fragments to make super healing potions which can help greatly with the moon lord, so make sure to save a few. Most players will probably have to defeat the celestial invasion at least twice to make all the gear they want and defeat the moon lord, unless you're a veteran at the game. And that's it, in today's video I went over everything you need to know to beat the celestial invasion in Terraria. If you guys enjoyed this video, remember to give it a thumbs up so I know to create more content like this. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, peace.